If you scroll around outside the ham bands, you will run across some strange signals, some of which might be interesting to you. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. The signals that you heard right at the beginning of this video are something called marine radio fax charts, and it's a product that the National Weather Service puts out. Now, I'll leave a link to this webpage either across the screen right here or down in the description below, and it's where you can come to find out where these images are broadcast from and what areas they cover. In my case, I'm interested in the Gulf of Mexico area, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that link on this page, and that's going to bring me to this second page here. One of the things that you can find on this page is all of the different products that will be broadcast from this particular station, and if you want to see a sample of any of those, you can click on either one of these blue buttons to get a sample image of what's being broadcast. But I want to go ahead and scroll all the way down to the bottom here because I want to take a look at the Radio Facts schedule for New Orleans. So let's go ahead and click into that GIF right there. And that will bring us to this page here. Now, right up at the very top, you're going to see these set of frequencies. Typically in the morning, I can use that 8503 frequency, and then later in the day, I typically will use the 12789 frequency. But there's four different ones utilized by this particular station, and just pick the one that works best for the time of day that you're trying to decode these images. Now, some of my favorites to decode are first the GOES IR tropical satellite image. And you can see right here that this happens twice a day at 0200 and at 1400. Now, note these times are in UTC. Three of the other products that I always like to decode are the 24, 48, and 72 hour surface forecasts. Those three forecasts, along with that satellite image, gives me a pretty good indication of what the weather's going to be in the short term. Now, to decode these images, you probably already have the software installed if you're into digital modes at all. We're going to be utilizing FL Digi today to decode these images. Let's go ahead and jump over to the computer, and I'll show you guys how to set that up. Inside of FL Digi, the first thing you want to do is come up here to where it says Op Mode. We'll go ahead and click on that, and then we're going to come all the way down to where we see WeFax. And then we're going to choose that first option, WeFax IOC 576. That will put FL Digi into the right mode to be able to decode these images. Now, something else you want to pay attention to is right down here at the bottom, and I'm going to try to make this as large as I can on the screen. You want to go ahead and uh, check auto and possibly noise. The auto is going to, you notice mine has the green light on it indicating its own. That auto is going to attempt to automatically center the image on the screen. It's not always perfect, but if it's not working, I'll show you how to correct it here in just a second. And the other one that you might want to enable is the noise filter. If you're getting some noise in your image, that can help reduce that noise. Now, you'll know that the image has started to decode by just watching the row counter down there in that bottom toolbar. And if it's not showing up immediately on the screen, you may have to push that scroll bar on the right up to the top of the page. And then, if the image is not centered in the screen, you can use the alignment tools that are also found in the toolbar. One other little helpful hint is if you find the image is a little bit too dark or a little bit too light, you can adjust the frequency on the radio, and it will actually darken or lighten that image depending on which direction you go. Now, don't go too far, you'll stop decoding, but just little slight tweaks to the frequency can dial that image in to your liking. You'll notice on the screen here that I've got a couple of different shades in this particular image, and that's because I was adjusting that frequency, leaving it sitting there for a while while it was decoding, and then adjusting it again, just so I could show you guys the difference that frequency would make in the image quality. Now, one of the cool things about this is once you've got it set up, you really don't have to sit there and babysit it. 
it will actually auto-save those images that it's decoded to a folder on your system. In order to find that system, you want to go up to File, then Folders, and then choose that WeFax directory. So the next time you stumble across those strange signals, you'll have a good idea of what they are. It's really easy to identify those radio fax signals by that clicking sound that you hear in the signal. That clicking sound that you hear identifies the start of a new line. So every time you hear that uh, clicking sound in the audio, you can actually watch your uh, row counter go up. So there's a short tutorial on how to decode those radio fax images put out by the National Weather Service. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.